Nathan, and welcome to beautiful Fenland Falls on the Trent Severn Waterway. Today we'll be discussing the ground brief portion of the flight review. Before we begin, please download and install two apps, Nav Drone by Nav Canada and Drone Center. You'll find links to both in the video description below. These apps will help you access important information such as the aviation weather, no TAMs, airspace, and help you conduct your site survey. All of this you'll need in order to do a good ground brief. So let's begin so you can know what to expect and so that you can conduct an excellent ground brief and ace this portion of your flight review. In today's episode, we will again be discussing the ground portion of your flight review. There are a few key areas we must discuss. One, are weather conditions suitable? Two, is your RPAS airworthy? Three, are all your documents valid and correct? Once these key areas are discussed, your flight reviewer will then allow you to move on to confirming your pre-flight planning procedures. Being a good drone pilot is not only about understanding how to fly your aircraft, but also the documents. These items consist of logbooks, continued airworthiness, checklists, and good pilot decision-making skills. We have seen pilots show up to their flight review with no checklists or documentation, and you can guess where that got them. This video is to assist the greater RPAS community as a whole in helping bring RPAS safety to the next level and assisting you as a first-time pilot in preparation for your flight review. We want you to start flying with the pros in no time. Remember to join www.canadiandronepilots.ca to network with the greater RPAS community and introduce yourself on the forums. There are people there that will help you. So let's get started. During your flight review, your examiner will almost certainly ask certain questions during the ground portion of the review that you should be aware of. The questions I will share with you now are only a brief snippet of things you should prepare for. We recommend you calling one fly sugu For additional ground briefs for, for pre-flight review and testing training, if you would like additional help to prepare. You may access the time to meet with our instructors direct on our website. I would also like to mention that everything covered today is purchasable via a small nominal fee to assist you for your flight test. Now let's begin. When the question is asked, are weather conditions good? This really is a loaded question. Let's peel back the layers and how you should answer. Are weather conditions good? Some questions that you may want to be aware of that your examiner may ask. What are the wind speed limitations of your RPAS? Your response as a candidate would be, the winds today are X kilometers per hour and my drone's max wind speed limitation is Y kilometers per hour. The next question your examiner may ask is, what is the temperature limitations of your drone? Your response as a candidate would be, the temperature today is X degrees Celsius, and the drone's minimum and maximum temperatures are X to Y degrees Celsius. By your reviewer is, is your RPAS airworthy? This simple question is yet again a loaded question. Let's peel back the layers to see how to answer this one. Is the RPAS airworthy? Really, what they are asking you to do is discuss much of the following. My RPAS has a certificate of registration and this is what it looks like. I have a drone flight log book and this is what it looks like. My drone operates within the specified weight condition and is not over the maximum manufactured specified weight of 
X grams, the minimum or maximum takeoff weight. The R pass C of G is within limits. There is no additional weight added to the airframe. Before we fly, the compass will be calibrated to meet safe flight conditions. And most importantly, there are no defects reported in the logs of the drone or associated equipment. In addition to all of the above reference, the examiner may also ask to what safety assured category is your drone rated? And is it appropriate for today's advanced operations? So let's take a look at our past document validity. If you would like to watch more on this section, please visit www.sugudrones.com as this section is fully elaborated on in both the ground brief and our course. So let's begin. Are all your documents valid and correct? How do we answer this? One, Drone RPAS logbook, do we have one? Two, pilot logbook, do we have one? Yes. Driver's license, do we have one? Yes. Pilot certificate, do we have one? Yes. Examination results, do we have them? Yes. First aid kit, do we have one? Yes. Fire extinguisher, do we have one? Yes. No TAM and weather report, do we have a copy of the day's no TAMs and weather? Yes. 250 grams to 25 kilograms. Information from the manufacturer on the weight of our drone and its reference, yes. Manufacturer's Operating Handbook or POH, yes. Do we have our site survey? Is it ready and complete? Yes. Current aviation maps, VNC and VTA or drone center or drone site selection tool from NavDrone, yes. Do we know what class of airspace we're operating in? Class G uncontrolled, for example. Pre-flight planning procedures. Accurate site survey manually or via applications such as RPAS, Wilco, or Drone Center. You will need to know all airports, heliports, and aerodromes in the area of your proposed operation. No TAMs and how they might affect your flight. The day's weather. The manufacturer's limitations in respect to the weather and your site. Two, pre flight briefing. Pre-flight briefing. Briefing. This is an example of how your briefing could be presented to your examiner. Orientation. My drone is pointed in the northwest direction. Who is doing what? I am the pilot. You are my examiner. As well, I will ask you to be my visual observer. Mission objectives and plans. As per the flight planned route assigned, I will be flying within this field at the altitude and directions you specify. Operational timeline. Our drone has an endurance of 20 minutes. We will try to operate the aircraft within the specified endurance period with a fail safe and redundancy margin of 20% of the battery. We expect to fly for no more than 16 minutes of the total endurance time of the drone. We have an expected departure time or takeoff time of 10 a.m. and an expected landing time of 4, 10, 15. Emergency procedures. In the event of an emergency, 
I will ask you to remain calm and read aloud the appropriate emergency checklist that I will provide you. Please ensure your phone is silent and distractions are removed from our area. Air space conflicts and avoidance. In the event of another aircraft in our vicinity, we will land immediately. Fly away. In the event of a flyaway, we will call out fly away three times and utilize our checklist. Public interference procedure. We will ensure we have an adequate marked and piloned area for our flight route with minimum safety assured distances. Recovery area. Our launch and recovery area will be located where our pylons and landing pad is. Communicating procedures with clients. We will advise all outside spectators to stand back 16.4 feet and away from our drone. Ground supervisor. As the pilot, I will also be the ground supervisor. Safe areas. Non-participants are reminded to stay outside of our safety assured perimeter which is 16.4 feet or five meters. Expectations of what the crew will observe. As my flight reviewer, you will also be my visual observer. Cell phone restrictions. Please ensure all auxiliary electronic devices other than the mission control systems dedicated for the drone are turned off. Clean cockpit. During takeoffs or landings, we will have a sterile cockpit, which will ensure all tasks as specified by our operation are only discussed. Roles and responsibilities. I will be the pilot and you will be the visual observer. On an additional note, items to bring for your flight review include pylons, landing pad, VNC and VTA map, pilot and drone log books, and not to fret or worry, all of this can be purchased via www.sugutools.com. Please be advised items take a minimum of three business days to be processed and shipping times differ from carrier to carrier. Now folks, that summarizes our ground brief tutorial. Please remember to call 1-888-FLY-SUGU or visit www.sugudrones.com to get assistance from our live chat agent on how to book your ground brief. Alternatively, you can directly help yourself on a ground brief by visiting our contact us section via sugudrones.com and selecting the ground brief dropdown. This will be the easiest way to book a time with me or any other instructor to help you prepare for your flight review. Lastly, if you would like to purchase this document I have just described to you, it can be purchased for a small nominal fee at sugutools.com. Please visit the link in our description below and we look forward to hearing and seeing more of you. Thanks for watching. These steps will help you prepare for your flight review. We suggest you do additional research before your flight review, and you can join canadiandronepilots.ca. There you can network with other pilots and ask questions about the flight review, and also apps, software, services, and even jobs. So until next time, happy droning, and don't forget to install NavDrone and Drone Center. These apps will help you with your flight review now and in all your advanced operations in the future. See you soon.